Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. I'm here today to talk to you about how you can play FIFA 22 Ultimate Team early before everybody else with EA Play and the 10 hour early access trial period. I'm going to show you how to get that 10 hour access and also the best way to use your 10 hours to get your ultimate team started off in the most efficient manner and get you rolling for this next year of FIFA 22 ultimate team. So first things first, when is this happening? September 22nd, this day has been known for a while. This is on EA Play's website. The 10 hour early access, it says hit the pitch first starting September 22nd. So that is gonna be the day when you will be able to get on the full game of FIFA 22 with your 10 hour trial if you get EA Play. So when that day comes on September 22nd, where are you gonna go? Well, it's a bit confusing on next gen, so I wanna walk you through it. On the PlayStation 5, you're gonna go to the store, you're gonna go subscriptions, you're gonna go to the EA Play subscription. If you have it, it's gonna show up here. Click learn more. You're gonna go and see the subscription levels, which right now, by the way, it is $1. It is literally $1 to get 10 hours of early access on the full game of FIFA 22, literally like a week and a half before everybody else in the world is gonna be getting on the full release of the game on the October 1st release date. So this is an incredible deal. If you were even thinking about playing FIFA 22, you might as well try it for a dollar, man. Come on, I mean, that's a crazy deal. So make sure, check this out if you haven't gotten EA Play already. I already paid five bucks for it over here before this deal happened, which is, this is just crazy, bro. What a deal, anyways. When you get to the EA Play subscription section here on your next gen console, you're gonna scroll down and right here, you're gonna see EA Play Early Access Trials. Right here, this is where you're gonna see FIFA 22. It's gonna pop up, you're gonna click on it and you're gonna go over here and say Early Access Trial. From here, it is gonna download the game for you. That does not count against your time. Your time will not start counting until you actually open the game up for the first time. And for now, what I'm gonna do is show you on FIFA 21 some of that stuff and how it's gonna work. So let's say you download a FIFA 22, you're sitting here about to go in whatever game mode. I mean, we're, we're all going into ultimate team, let's be real. But in the bottom right-hand corner, your time will start running when you see the EA Play access right down right now where it says FIFA 21 that will say EA play access trial or something along those lines right there when you see that and when you get to that screen that's how you know your time is running and you are on the EA play full version of the game so with that being known when you exit the game let's say you go in you play two hours so you've got eight hours left when you leave the game make sure that when you get to your home screen whatever console you're on press the start button and close the game close the game and close the app because if you don't, it's gonna run off a couple extra minutes of your time before the game actually closes itself. That is crucial because that could burn up some of your time that you don't wanna see going. So make sure that you do that when you are closing your game of FIFA 22. So that's all the information about EA Play. I'm gonna talk about now how to best use those 10 hours because a lot of people have a, are at a lot of different skill levels, right? Some of you guys might be playing FIFA for the first time. Some of you guys might be 10 year pros. You've been playing FIFA since it came out in like FIFA 10, FIFA 11. So I wanna take you guys through, I'm gonna show you on FIFA 21, but I'm gonna talk about some of the best ways you can use your 10 hours. And a lot of people are in agreement that using those 10 hours are gonna be best, you're gonna be the most efficient using that time on gameplay. You're gonna to wanna to play games because if you play games, you're gonna get rewards, whether that is squad battles, division rivals, foot draft, depending on your level of capacity, how good of a player in FIFA Ultimate Team you are, that might change what um, version or what sector of gameplay you wanna actually go out and play. Now this is gonna be released on a Wednesday, right? And also one thing to think about is Division Rivals rewards are revamped and we don't exactly know when Division Rivals rewards will be, but they are still weekly. Foot Champions rewards are claimed instantly. That's another topic. Weekly rewards for Division Rivals are still earned on a weekly basis. We just don't know what day they are in the actual game. So one thing we're gonna have to check right away when we get in is what day Division Rivals rewards are paid out because if they're paid out before Sunday, because squad battle rewards are always on Sunday, 
then we might actually play division rivals first before we play squad battles. But in my opinion, squad battles is the generic easy place to go because there's so few people on the game. You don't have to wait on waiting times to like load into the game, wait for matchmaking and stuff like that, which it shouldn't be too hard to find a match, but then you don't have to wait at all. Once you get your team sorted, once you get into a game, it's just boom, you're there. So I would recommend playing squad battles because you're gonna move up the ranks very fast as well because there's less people on the game there's less skill rating in total so you're going to be able to move to the top like you might be getting into elite three into elite two after playing a decent amount of games until that first sunday when the rewards period would be but again the main focus of this 10 hour period should be gameplay you should be playing games in whatever mode you see fit maybe foot draft right foot draft would be a, a, a game mode if you have fifa points if you have fifa points you could play foot drafts. That would be the only way that I spend FIFA points actually on the game. Now, if you are loading up FIFA points to open packs at the beginning, I would say load into the ultimate team on the game because you'll transfer your points from FIFA 21 to FIFA 22 the first time you log into the actual game. But then after that, log out and open all your packs on the web app because if you do that, it's going to take a lot of time on the actual console to open up all of your packs. So I would open all of your packs if you're opening FIFA points on the web app or at least open most of them. Don't open very many on the console because that's just gonna, you know, that's gonna be taking up time that you could be using to get rewards by playing games. So that's my recommendation there. Building your squad, opening your welcome backpacks, um, doing SBCs, I would do all of that on the web app as well. Basically everything but gameplay. Do on the web app. I know it's a bit annoying. I know it's not the most easy. It's not the most fun because especially if you're on your console, it's like, man, it's just right here in front of me. Um, as a, in my opinion, to be the most efficient, I would do it all on the web app. Now I'm going to use some of my extra console time or I'm going to use extra console time to do some of that extra stuff just because I'm going to be making videos and creating content and stuff like that. But using the web app is very, very, very key to keeping that number of hours last you a long time and to be the most efficient with it. So I wouldn't trade on the, I wouldn't tra trade on here as well. I would trade only on the web app. And also it's hard to snipe. It is really hard to snipe and out snipe people that are using the web app. Like let's say you're using a filter, right? Let's say Brazilian, uh, Brazilian center backs. Let's say that they are expensive at the start of FIFA 22 Ultimate Team, and let's say they're all selling for like 2,000 coins a piece, and you're gonna go on and try to snipe them for 1,000 coins when people list them up, kind of like what's actually happening right here on FIFA 21, but it's gonna be way easier for you to win those snipes and to get those deals on the web app. If you can click fast, use the enter key, of course, as well, that's gonna be way easier than trying to win snipes on the actual game itself. So. Again, that would be my best way to use your 10 hours. It depends on your skill level. Again, if you're a really elite level player, then maybe I would go into foot drafts and just try to mop everybody up or into division rivals and start moving up the ranks. There are not division rivals placement coins this year. So you won't get, you know, when you move to a new division or when you get placed in a division, there's none of that. No coin boost this year. Everybody starts in Division 10 and you move your way up. So if you want to start that grind, you could start in Division Rivals as well. I would just take a look at the rewards when we get into the actual game. I know right now this is not what it looks like. This, These are screenshots from what it looks like inside of FIFA 22. I would look at the rewards and say, okay, you can preview these rewards. So um, once I get to a certain number of wins, is it going to be worth it for me? So that's just kind of something that you might have to decide on your own to figure out what is the best way for me to spend my time based on what level of a player that I am in this game. But gameplay is the number one thing. It really is. I would do everything else on the web app uh, if, if you have that availability. So that would be the best way to use your time right there. So also a couple other tips, keep watching your timer, keep a watch on your time counter. You can leave every so often. I think what it will show is if you leave, then of course you go out here and you're gonna go to the home and you're gonna close the app. But I think that it even might show a timer like either right below the actual app or maybe in game, it'll tell you or when you open the game, it'll say, hey, you have this many hours left. Keep a close eye on that timer because that's how you're gonna know how many hours you have left, 
what all you can do, what all you can't do. And then of course, at the end of the month, make sure that if you don't want to continue with your EA Play subscription, make sure that you cancel it because it'll re-upcharge you every single month at $5 a month, not $1. If you paid $1 at first, it's probably going to charge you five every time after that. So what I would say is make sure that you cancel your subscription after that if you don't want those benefits to continue. There's only one 10-hour trial. There were some, I guess, rumors that there might be a 10 hour trial for old gen and a 10 hour trial for new gen. But there were some tweets posted by an EA employee in the EA forums. And I know this is in Spanish, but there's there's a actually there's a translation right here. Here we go. Somebody, a community manager in the EA forum said that the 10 hour trial will add up to a total of 10 hours. You can distribute them from next gen to old gen, but it is not two 10 hour periods on the separate um, old generation PS4 or PS5 new generation. So people are thought people thought there might be a little bit of a workaround there. It does not look like that is going to be the case. Also, there's always talks about EA Access glitches. Usually those are on the Xbox. I have not heard about a one that has worked really well. So it really just seems like you're gonna have to use your 10 hours, use those carefully. And that's why I'm making this video about how to be efficient with it in this game of FIFA 22, but it's gonna be exciting and that time is coming very, very close. So if this video helped you at all, make sure you smash a thumbs up on it, comment down below if you have any questions and subscribe if you are new. It's been Nate the Foot Accountant. I will catch you guys later. Peace out.